Hello, everybody out there in streaming land. So we just finished episode seven. Um, just a good time. Had a good time. Um, in general, I didn't have any extra prep to do. I had prepped it all last time. I am now at zero. I've got to get caught up for next week, but that's next week's Bob. Next week, Bob. Tomorrow, Bob's problem. It's not today, Bob's problem. Um, the conversion notes. Um, the veteran was fine. Worked out really well, especially with him being drunk and not delivering all of his attacks. We'll, we'll get to the play-by-play. -play. But uh, that swap for that uh, drunken guard was fine. The bard was okay. I overlooked the fact that she did not have proficiency in stealth. Turned out it didn't matter. Um, I'll get to that in a minute, but the, the party solved the problem in a creative way, as they do, and it was good to see. Um, but the stats didn't didn't turn out to be that important. This is a recurring character, probably, maybe. So, you know, <clears throat> excuse me. It may come up again. Um, I didn't didn't do any of the potions, and they left that uh, guard sword just sort of laying in the street. I kind of thought somebody would notice it was a plus one long sword when I was swinging it at them, but they didn't take it. So, good on them. Um, we'll have to see what happens with Growl in the future. So, uh, yeah, um, pretty much everything that was ready I used except for the slum quarter map for the Trina encounter. Trinia encounter I didn't do it that way. I just decided to do it abstractly. Um, I was looking at the clock a little bit as well. Um, so reasonably happy with materials for that. But uh, something else came up during the stream, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So I thought we would do the Drunken Guard encounter and then the uh, Queen's Scapegoat. And that's basically what happened, except they decided to interface more with the Rikshasha. And that part sort of threw me for a loop, and it's my own darn fault. So case study in uh, Dungeon Master shenanigans, if you will. They had found the dagger. As you may recall from previous episodes, the dagger is actually a shape-shifted rikshasha, and they were able to discover some of that information last time. <clears throat> and I reminded it of them, reminded them of it this time. And there was a player who wasn't here last time, who was also sort of absorbing this information for the first time, and so it was all fresh in mind. Well, I um, decided that the creature was going to try and hide from them by changing its shape, which kind of works and it kind of didn't. So I just went into the Fantasy Grounds character sheet and I changed Silver Dagger to Silver Cup. And I changed it in the description as well, really quickly. Um, and I don't know <coughs> if Sam saw it change. He didn't, he indicated that he didn't. And I believe him. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm, congested tonight. Um, anyway, so that went well, except they were very interested all of a sudden in this dagger and in you know befittingly i suppose but they uh decided hey what happens if we pour holy water into the dagger so they went or into the cup right the dagger that had changed into a cup so they went and got it and they did that thing and of course it takes 2d6 damage and by script in the text it attacks you know when it's threatened oh excuse me Otherwise, it would, you know, escape and come back as some other silver object to continue to spy on the party, who's a much more interesting spying target than the person they pulled him off of. Well, then the paladin busts out this radiant damage rebuke thing um, right after the Rekshasha had thrown his best ability, the lightning bolt, trying to clear a path, right, for escape. And the paladin was able to redirect that damage right back on him, just vaporized him which sort of solves the problem as far as like we don't want to derail the adventure with this information just yet this is supposed to be foreshadowing and it's come to a head really quickly because i changed it into a cup and made them super interested in it and um so that part of the problem is pretty much solved but it's interesting so case study dungeon mastering um you know just sort of slice and dice uh, you want to pull at the threads of the tapestry, 
but you don't want to grab and yank. Um, and that's that's what I ultimately wound up doing. It was too strong. The change happened too quickly. It was not subtle enough, but it was it was subtle enough to um, develop some interest, but it was too much interest. And so I sort of worked against myself a little bit. Overall, I think it was fun. I think it was memorable and enjoyable. And for a uh, game runner's perspective or a host perspective, I think I think all of that was was right. I think all of that was dialed in and correct. However, <laughs> it didn't go how I expected it to, and I wasn't prepared. I had to scramble a little bit. I had to find a map and do some other things. And if you watch the stream, you'll see it lagged considerably there. Oops, right. But um, it's fine. It's fixed. It's better. Uh, let's see. What else? So then the the drunken guard encounter did happen, and they just fought him. They just sort of beat him up, and, and it was seen as a distraction at best. There was no uh, inkling that it might be tied into the story in any way, and that's okay, um, because I think we could bring it back around later. Oh, excuse me. I think, you know, I don't think it's a big deal. I think it can be an event that happened that they can remember. And, <clears throat> you know, we'll see. But uh, that, that didn't go anywhere, and I, I don't think it clicked. Then the uh, chase, you know, they wound up handling that pretty creatively. They, they bought a spellcasters, and, and that's one of the things I don't like chase scenes in Dungeons & Dragons explicitly for that reason. Um, if you go and view the two streams for... Uh, Dragon Heist, the chase scene in those happened pretty much the same way, and it could just be the way I run them, right? All three of these situations do have me in common, so there's that. But, um, yeah, the, the just, it was clunky. It wasn't very well fit into the combat system. The players felt restrained. They were trying to sort of negotiate extra actions, and ultimately I just let them have it. Because, you know, partly we were running up to time, but also it's like, it's not a lot of fun, you know. Um, you want to make it challenging, ask the question, get the answer sort of thing. You don't want to set back after setback after setback um, and turn it into a frustration exercise. So there you go. That was tonight. So two things I could have done a little bit better. I could have prepped the chase better. Um, could have had that ready instead of changing my mind last minute on how I wanted to run that encounter. And um, I probably shouldn't have changed the dagger to a cup just yet. I probably should have done it when they weren't talking about the item, but they weren't thinking about it because he went to look for the dagger and it had changed to a cup. And I, I wanted that. But not that much of that, right? So my fault there. That's all good. As always, comments, concerns, questions. If you just want to talk, come hop into the Discord. I've got a link right here in the corner. And uh, happy to help you with your own dungeon mastering situations. Um, I'm willing to review your stuff because you're here watching mine and that sort of thing. So just let me know if I can be of any help. And until next week, you guys have fun playing games. Talk to you soon.